to go. Good evening. I'd like to call the regular board meeting of the Waterloo Community School District to order and ask that you join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. And will you please rise and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And next, Rhonda McCrina will read our mission statement. The Waterloo Schools community commits to a comprehensive system of education and support to assure that each and every student will graduate prepared for college, career, and citizenship as evidenced by continuing education, pursuing a career path, and contributing to a community. Thank you. And the next item on our agenda is information from individuals and delegations. Um, if this is the opportunity for those who wish to address the school board to do so, I ask that you please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Mrs. Arndorfer will hold up a yellow card when you have 30 seconds remaining and a red card when your time has expired. And at that time, I will ask that you please conclude your comments. Please also keep them respectful and constructive. We are all here with the goal of trying to help our students. I ask that you also avoid criticizing the job performance of specific employees of the school district. Personal matters are confidential and must be handled through proper channels and not in a public forum. And finally, we provide this as an opportunity for public uh, comment, but it is generally not a back and forth discussion, especially for items that are not on our agenda. But at times, we certainly will try to help with information before or after the meeting, um, but we do need to proceed with our board meeting agenda items. So with that, I invite anyone who wishes to address the board to come forward and start by stating your name and home address. Right there. You're up. You're up. And there is a little button that says push, and you'll get a green light right there the in microphone. front of you on the microphone so we can all hear you well. Good evening. My name's Steve Ray. Um, I live at 5030 Hammond Avenue, Waterloo, Iowa, and I'm here to address an issue uh, busing concerns for my son James, who's a student at West High. Uh, currently, at the moment, uh, we live 2.7 miles from West High School and we pay for busing. My son has to walk approximately half a mile to get the bus, which is provided for students that get it, ride it for free. We pay for the busing, as I said. Um, I'm not trying to avoid payment for the busing. I'm trying to get a stop change so that he doesn't have to walk on roads that are totally unsafe. I have printouts of the roads here there are no sidewalks and there are ditches and there is no shoulder on the roads. The road that he'll have to walk down is Charles Avenue, Charles, I mean, and once he has to walk down there, he'll have to go on to, uh, from Hammond, where we live, on to Charles. And there are no sidewalks on Hammond and nothing but ditches. As I said, I'm not trying to avoid paying for the fee, <coughs> I'm just trying to get the bus stop lo relocated. The morning bus and the evening bus drive straight past the intersection, which is probably about 250 feet from our place. Um, and I just don't know why we have to go through this process to get the busing changed. I think it went off. I've spoken in the past with Dr. Lindemann mm -hmm. several times on the phone over this, and I've got no result, and that's why I feel if I present it to you, with some actual photos mm -hmm. of the area and what he would be up to to get to his stop, I might get a better hearing. Okay. And I have these photos. I have uh, Google Earth printouts plus a thread of emails that's been going back and forth from my wife to the school board and different people on the school mm -hmm. facilities, even down the state level. But as I say, all I'm trying to do Let's get another stop put in. Currently there's six kids on the bus of the morning and six on the afternoon. We pay for our busing. He has to walk to a stop where the children get picked up for free because they're past the three mile limit. They don't pay for their busing, so we're getting hit twice 
because we're paying for it in our local taxes as well mm -hmm. and I just don't think it's entirely fair and I'm looking at it from a safety point of view from him walking down there with roads covered with ice and snow which will happen in the near future. And I'd like to leave this information here with you, these printouts and the email thread, if I could. You certainly may. Absolutely. And that's it. We'll be happy to take right. it. But, yeah, Michael. We'll it. get it from you. I assume you don't wish to say anything further. Just let him know that we. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Appreciate the information. We'll be sure to take a look at it. You're welcome. Is there anyone further that wishes to address the board this evening? <laughs> great. Charlotte, you're sure you're not? Okay, great. Then uh, moving on, we will. Uh, the next item on our agenda is our consent agenda and this evening it consists of three items item um, item a which is the minutes of the November 14th 2016 regular board meeting and the November 21st 2016 special board meeting item B which is personnel appointments and adjustments and item C bills due and payable and bills paid between board meetings are there any items um, that um, board members wish to have removed from the consent agenda? Items B and C, Bravo right. and Charlie, please. B and C. Great, then with that, I would entertain a motion to put item A on the agenda, <laughs> on the table. So moved. And a second? Second. Great, and discussion? Then all those in favor of approving item A of the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye, motion carried. That will then take us to item B on page six, personnel appointments and adjustments. I move the Board of Education approve the personnel items as listed. And a second? second. And discussion. Yeah, I noticed there were two uh, regular classroom teachers that uh, <coughs> leaves of absence were approved at the end of, well, Thanksgiving break. That's kind of an awkward time. It's not the end of the semester or anything. How do we, how do we go about? You know, I'm sure we don't have reserved teachers, particularly specific subject matter. Uh, how do we address those? Uh, we use long-term subs, and typically, if they're going to be gone, sometimes the the leaves of absence are very short-term. But if they're going to be gone for a considerable amount of time, two or three weeks or more. Um, the building principals interview candidates the among out of our sub pool and will select long-term subs for those positions yes you're talking about these okay. what's long term what would a long over 10 days 10 days mm -hmm. are these particular ones are they like the end of the year or are they just 10 days okay you say you oh you mean what the vacancy is yeah um, it just kind of depends it, um, many times if it's a health and family responsibility it's um, they have um, exhausted their other leaves available to them and they're dealing with some medical issue which might require short term or long term we we don't um, know they have a right to up to two years Bev is that also maternity leave does maternity well we leave don't have maternity leave but, the it, <coughs> but usually the sick eight to 12 yeah. weeks for um, having it's a it's baby it's, it's not it's not called maternity leave. It's not just maternity leave. It comes under disability, doesn't it? I think no. It's, uh, no. It's no, not it's under a personal illness. Mm -hmm. Personal yeah. illness, mm -hmm. okay. And Dr. Smith, just to clarify also, because we've had a couple conversations about contracts and other things, when someone takes a leave of absence, you said they have up to two years, but they're not they're not vacating their contract. They're not t vacating their contract obligations. They are. No, they have a right by their contract to be granted uh, two years of leave. Great. Okay, thank you. Is there anything further then on item B? Then all those a favor, in favor of approval, please signify by saying aye. aye. <coughs> those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Um, let takes us then to item C, which is on page nine. 
I move the Board of Education approve the bills due and payable and the bills paid between board meetings. And a sec, thanks, Mike. And discussion. Yeah, my question is, or my comment uh, is relative to the the Durham payment on item 11. I'm just wondering if it wouldn't be wise to ask Durham for some official correspondence regarding how they hire and how they determine um, when to relieve bus drivers due to the the tragic accident that was a Durham accident and okay. she might have noticed and, and number of news mm -hmm. yep. identified Waterloo as one of the services so so I think it would be appropriate uh, you know we pay them a lot of money 448,000 for this month that to just make sure we understand what their process is yeah and uh, and then you know if it's satisfactory to us which I assume it will be but still if anything were to happen we would have that document to say this, this clarifies our understanding with Durham as to you know what their responsibilities mm -hmm. what they're committing to so for dismissing drivers is that what you're well hiring and dismiss yeah the yeah. whole the their whole policy mm -hmm. how, how sure. do they Certainly. you know what's the process for them mm -hmm. to uh, ensure drivers mm -hmm. are going to be safe drivers I guess. yeah and it might also be helpful to know um, they have a very extensive training program yeah. and so yeah, I could include the hiring process the training process and and should it be needed dismissal process yeah is certainly that regulated different from state to state some of it is I yeah there possibly could be I know that um, I mean Iowa Department of Transportation certainly may have some laws that would be different from other states but I think Durham policies are corporate so um, but that's a really and I'm sure question. Durham has probably released a statement I, I saw they were quoted a couple different places um, as right. you know when I was reading through those news outlets so and I would bet yeah. they've got they could get us this policy right. pretty quickly and their CEO released a statement to mm -hmm. a very you know heartfelt sad. statement but very sad very sad great idea Lyle yeah, we'll do that. is there anything further then on item D seeing none all those in favor of approval please signify by saying aye. aye aye those opposed same sign chair votes aye motion carried that takes us then to exhibit D <coughs> which is board policy changes and the recommended motion for this is that the board approve the following policy no cost passes to district sponsored activities and events so moved and a second great and discussion I know this is the second reading of this and Tara Thomas is here with us this evening our director of school and community relations um, Tara just to refresh our viewers memories this was in place I believe to just clarify how these passes are used is that correct correct okay so pretty straightforward changes does anyone have any questions for Tara we should put in here that the picture has to be the original <laughs> picture. So that you, <laughs> you can't use your high school photo. <laughs> uh, you're making me laugh. <laughs> I don't even think they have pictures on them, do they? Yeah. They do? The long term ones? I didn't think they I did. I think so. I thought they were just yellow, but I, I guess don't I have recall. to. Taking tickets at the games. I can't recall. Oh, because the pass yeah. holders go to different places. Yes. Then, so I haven't seen them. I'm thinking my folks don't have their photos, but maybe they do. So, yeah, some of them don't. You're right. Some oh. of those sen senior passes don't. So. All right. Anything further? Then all those in favor of approval of the board policy change, um, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. That takes us then to Exhibit E. Thank you, Tara. I appreciate it. Um, which is financial information for for information only, and I'm going to turn it over to our Chief Financial Officer, Michael Coughlin. Um, we're going to go through some finances tonight, which is always a good thing. <laughs> I'm gearing us That's up. kind of a build-up, <coughs> but yeah. this is really the um, 
the regular financial report through the month of October. We've been talking a lot about the end of the previous fiscal year uh, with reports that we have uh, been, been completing for the summer and for the audit and so forth. And um, July and August are not uh, heavy months of activity for spending or for revenue. Um, so really September and October are the first um, months that we get back into the normal um, expenditure trends um, because we start paying teacher salaries again uh, being one of our main uh, sources of expenditure. So just point out the different areas that are included in the report. Uh, pages 19 through 22 is by fund the um, cash balances uh, that are in each of the accounts, uh, what came in for receipts and out as expenses, and then there's a few uh, memorandum entries about receivables and payables at the end of the previous year. <coughs> but you can follow the um, cash balance of each fund and um, what is happening from month to month. Uh, the graph at the end also summarize that as we get to uh, that report at the end of the section. So then going to page 23, 23 through 26 is a detail by source code, which is really a, a fancy way of saying where the money's coming from, uh, whether it's property tax, uh, which is the majority of, of the local funds that come in. And then there's state money, um, state aid and other grants, and then federal money that comes in. Uh, two of the highest amounts in that are Medicaid reimbursements and ti the title money. So by each fund, it shows um, the money, the revenue that's coming in in each one. And if you're uh, looking during in the general fund, I, ha I do have the budgets in for 1617 um, as compared to the actual in 1516. But when you look at page 25 and 26, I don't have those in for the other funds as of yet. But they will be uh, in for next time. And they're really. Uh, not a lot of change from year to year uh, in those other funds besides the general fund. So these are the revenues. So first we had the cash balances and now we have the revenues and then moving on to the expenditures on page 27 through 30. Um, those are broken down by the type of expenditure that they are being used on. Um, the first page on 27 is salaries. And you can see all the different categories of salaries that we have. Um, and again, you'll see the <coughs> majority of those payments starting in September and October. Um, and then in page 28 and so on, you get into the benefits of purchase services, overhead, supplies, equipment, and uh, the AEA share um, through the month of October as compared to the budget that is uh, put in for 1617 as compared to the actual from uh, last year. And on page 30, it just gives you an idea of where we're sitting on a line item budget. Uh, about in the middle of the page, it says fund 10 totals. So the budget, line item budget for 1617 is 128 million, almost 600,000, as compared to 125 million, 900,000. So it has gone up, but again, that is a budget figure compared to an actual from the year before. And there's always a little put into that budget for the unexpected. So that was the maximum that we would be spending out of that fund. <coughs> So when you're doing a compar comparison from one year to the next, you are looking at an actual compared to an estimation, the budget for the new year. Um, 
And then there's a recap on the bottom of page 31 of those categories just in total. So you can go across and see what we're spending in salary benefits and so on just as a group as compared to the previous year. I will say that the expenditures to this point are as we've expected. Um, and we are uh, currently refining uh, those things even as we change staff and add a position and replace things here and there. Um, one of the um, changes that came in the November payroll was anybody that had earned a lane change didn't get paid for that until then. So really, when I do a 12 month comparison, December is really the first clean month that I can use to say, here's the amount and can I multiply it times 12 to see if it's going to come close to the budget. So that will be coming up in just a couple of weeks to be able to refine that as well. <clears throat> On page 31 and 32 are the other funds. Uh, the expenditures by their categories and again I don't have the budgets in there yet either but they will run very close to the previous year and they will be in for the next time and then on page 33 is just a picture that's worth a thousand words uh, compared to the budget or the cash balances on the first report that we looked at and that gives you an idea um, by the graphs of where we stand with cash uh, in the bank compared to the last two years and then you can also see the actual numbers on the right hand side um, comparing where we've been at this time uh, in the last two years and these are our four major funds the general fund management fund uh, the sales tax revenue fund and the PEPL fund so um, really the only one that's noticeably different is PEPL and that would be because of the CTE project that was heavily using those funds early in the year um, and that will um, recover a little bit as we go through the year and um, if you can see the trend line there that we usually bump up at the end of the year and we get uh, the second half of the tax money coming in so uh, things are operating uh, as we're expecting and we will continue to drill down into the detail <coughs> as we go month by month uh, the management fund last year bumped up was there a, what was the cause of that we ended um, early retirement plan Okay. and insurance came in lower than what we expected our property liability so it was kind of two things and when we approve the management budget each year we don't know what our um, property liability rates are going to be so we have to leave a little leeway in there for that um, so that will be something that we look at um, when we pass next year's budget to say if we've got the trend of what these costs are we might be able to uh, trim that back a little bit on page 30 um, the big ticket item there the salaries we're projecting 1.2 million more than well the budgets more than actual last year do you adjust the budget based on if, if the 14 year to date was for some reason out of line do you go back and adjust the budget now or is that budget fixed for the year I start out with a budget based on the um, projecting the staff we have going forward and some of the cuts that we have made but honestly there's a lot of uh, staff that uh, are replaced people leave and new people come in and they have a different level Mm -hmm. They may be getting paid more or less than what the previous year's staff was there. And it's not just the teachers, it's all the different um, positions that come uh, into that. Um, only going up 1.2 million is not much of a change from one year to the next. When if you look at 
if everybody stayed on staff and graduated into the next year, we'd be looking more of a three to $3.2 million increase. So there was some cutbacks um, with some positions. So, um, and in all areas, not just teachers, there was paras and, and others as well. So right now that is our projection based on the staff that we currently have, but I will look at that as December comes through and be able to project that out to an annual basis and see if we're still staying within that range. But I expect it to change a little bit. So then do you change the budget? Yes. Okay. So right now the, the 74.8 is aligned with the 14.4. Correct. Okay. On uh, page 20, the 6.6 .6 million in uh, bond principal interest and fees, is that one of how many bonds? How many bonds do we have that we're paying on? Um, we are paying on three. Okay. So that six point six million is for one of the three bonds? Um it was for I believe two of the three. Okay. Because one of them was that five million that we did that we were paying back over two years and that was a payment in July. Okay. So that was about two and a half million, then about four million on the on the major bond. Okay. And is the is the other one then, is that a smaller or larger amount? When I said three, I didn't include that little okay. $5 million one. So there's actually right. three plus that one. The other two that we have, one was a $10 million bond that we had. And the, the other one was the QSCB bond that we make payments basically to our own sinking fund. But it does show up in that number that we're actually making the payment. So it's kind of like three and a half bonds. We'll be done with the we'll be done with the five million dollar bond in July of this next year. Okay. And then I think in November, uh, isn't this about the time you know the true up or the final on the one percent sales money? Have it we, is. We have not received that yet. Okay. But it should be coming shortly. Okay. It's usually between four and five hundred thousand. Okay. That's what the trend has been. Yeah, but okay. That's all my questions. Michael, I want to piggyback on what Lyle asked you about when we have to change or amend the budget. That doesn't require us to do if it's within a certain amount. No, what we're talking about here is just the line item budget. Right. The published budget Thank that you. the board has approved is a much higher number than this. Yes. Okay. We just was keep clarifying. it within a range of um, a comfortable range that we wouldn't want to go over that. Yeah. But within that, we do um, changes within just the line item budget as long as we're staying within that published amount. Thank you. That's why yeah. I just wanted to clarify that it's, this is the line item that we're talking about, but not that not our budget right. that we publish and that we are held to by. So the total of the line item budget is less than? Yes. Okay. In the past, I know we have um, actually gone below or in debt and had to take a loan out to, to finish For cash part of the flow. year, cash yeah. flow. And we have not need, needed to do that the last few years, is that correct? We have not. And even the last two years that we did do that through a local bank, we did it just because we were supporting the sales tax revenue fund with our own money rather than uh, taking out a borrow earlier. Um, but now that that is being, being restored by that $5 million bond, the general fund um, is staying above zero all year long so we don't have to borrow money for that. Okay. That's a good thing, right? Yes, it is. Take that. 
Is there anything, anybody have more questions for Mr. Coughlin? All right. Appreciate, Same. appreciate all your information. Yeah. I just, just um, adding to what Mr. Kinchy was asking, if you look back on page 33 where the graphs are, mm -hmm. you'll see that even with staying in a positive manner, there's a couple of times during the early part of the year uh, that we get pretty close to what we need but the rest and that's just basically the difference between a 15th payroll and state aid coming out on the 18th and boost that up so we're uh, only even close a couple times of the year that's just basically a timing issue Great. Thanks. I'll echo that, uh, what Lyle said, Michael. Thank you very much for providing this information for us. And it's always good to keep it all, keep it all relevant <laughs> in front. So um, that concludes, well, actually, we're done with our action items. Um, and so we can uh, move on to the superintendent's report, Dr. Lindemann. Absolutely. Um, I knew that it was a little bit of a lighter agenda, so I actually have several things, and I'll, I'll try to move through them quickly. But um, so this week, I happened to be looking at my calendar, and I noticed that um, Waterloo Schools employees have the opportunity mm -hmm. this week to have their, or next, actually, I think it's next week, their blood profiles done as far as insurance. And I thought it might be a good time to just mention something generally that we have a wellness department that runs through the human resources department, and this is just more for information and it's just relevant. But um, I think that it's very, it, it's very important for the public to know and, and all of us to know too that um, we are a district that doesn't just take our health for granted. We do some things to really try to be proactive as far as mm -hmm. helping our staff stay, um, have opportunities to do a variety of things. And so I was just kind of looking at some of the things that our wellness department has done. Um, and really one of, you know, for example, I even saw one time they were putting out some, some healthy recipes, um, doing some things like, um, they they do some some um, physical activity things. You can come and learn different, you know, yoga and a variety of things like that. Travel tips. I remember one time they had travel tips where you could come and just learn a variety of different things about tra traveling cheaply. And so we had one of our our um, resident travel experts come in and talk about that. Um, we've done things on money management. We've done things on stress. Um, stress relief and and just most recently the bro blood profiles which I always sign up for every year because I think you know it's it's twenty five dollars of our money but it's just a really great opportunity to do it right here in this building so or in the building that that um, our staff works so I just thought that was just kind of a nice thing to mention it's just timely and especially with the holidays coming I guess we probably all ate too much I I would assume maybe not Dr. McNulty but the rest of us um, <laughs> did he's a much better eater than the rest of us but um, so you know I just think that that's really I, it was just a, a timely thing to mention I thought um, as far as the the gentleman who was here to talk about the bus I, I, I know that we refrain from talking about specifics of things but I, I do think that it's an important concept to actually mention so I just wanted to talk a little bit about the, po the way that the policy reads right now so for um, bus riders who are not eligible for transportation, the way that our policy reads right now is that they can pay for transportation and it is their obligation to just get to the closest bus stop. And so we have followed that very closely. We, we try not to make exceptions because I, I will say once you do it for all, if you have a policy, it, mean, it means that the policy probably should be followed. If you're not gonna follow it, then you probably shouldn't have a policy. And Tara wouldn't have anything to do when she thinks about the policies coming up so um, that's the policy and I know he mentioned I think he said uh, walks about a half of a mile um, in this case that that isn't quite right but um, so we do have people going there if we if we want to start picking up door-to-door -door paid paid ridership then we're going to need to to have that conversation about whether that that policy needs to be changed so right now we are following the policy and and people do get to the closest site um, i know my children are bus riders and they also walk a little ways to get to their bus so so it's not necessarily um, atypical for a person to have to walk to the bus site but anyway that was i just wanted to mention that so that we kind of were clear on what that is um, they do get to the nearest bus site and then they can go from there so but I think we, we might want to look at the policy if if the bus route 
goes closer mm -hmm. to put a stop on an existing route. Yep, and we can change the policy is, to do that. Um, is we, seemingly a... Uh, we have had um, we have had times in the past where somebody has said you go around the 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 block this way when you could go around this way and pick me up and you know that kind of thing and so we would want to be careful about that but that doesn't mean we can't change policy and look at you know how to be as accommodating as possible but every time we do that then we'd have to look at bus routes and how minutes change and when people get on so it's it and is not undoable. Right, and how many kids that Families. that impacts, and so I, I would say that we're probably looking at a policy change versus just making an isolated decision on one student, because there are other times when we have followed the policy, and so if we if we do deviate for for uh, you know one particular family, whether it's just this gentleman tonight or somebody else, we probably do need to be prepared to do that for everyone um, who is who is being yeah. impacted by that, because it's. You know, consistency is is something that's important to people. And, and, and so. uh, because it's a rural route, we don't have a lot of those. But the stops are much further apart. Mm -hmm. They are, and I think in this case, it's it's actually point two three miles or something like that on a on a. So it, it is, you know, but yeah. you know, we have yeah. So we'll we'll talk about that. But I again, I would urge that we would look at a policy versus um, that. So yeah. was he was he correct? There's only six kids on the bus. I don't, I wouldn't know about that, but I, I mean, maybe there's six kids when he gets on, but I'm not sure about, I, I don't know. That might be something to follow up yeah, on. Yeah, I, I noticed that, that, yep, yep. <laughs> and, and I did talk <laughs> with him multiple times, <laughs> too, and he was very kind and very, yeah. very cordial, and we were able to, um, you know, talk about a variety of, of, op, of options for him, so, and I did actually suggest that if he wanted, I, I actually was the one who suggested that he come here because he said, what do I do if I don't like your decision? And I said, you come to the school board meeting mm -hmm. or you talk with them or whatever. And so I actually recommended that he come here. Yeah. So yep. we're yeah, never, I mean, that's what, we're, that's what we're here for. So yep. I think that was the right thing for him to do. Um, two more things. Um, I wanted to mention career and technical education. Um, we have several things going on with our Waterloo Career Center, and so I'm just going to mention them very briefly. First of all, we know that at the ribbon cutting, we, we um, announced our next three programs, and so we are, re we are right now working to make sure that we get our plan in place and trying to get a cost for what that would, would um, you know, what the cost would be for these renovations for advanced manufacturing, for information technology, and for early childhood um, education. And so we are working on that right now. Um, and the beauty of it, I've said multiple times, the beauty of it is it's not May. Because last year we made that decision in May and we had just a few months to make that happen. So, um, you know, it's, it's November still, not for long, but we are working on that. Um, a couple things too, um, we are, um, for, we've been tracking enrollment for these programs and I'm really excited to report to the public. I know the board, I had put it in their update, but um, when we looked at the spring enrollment, it is already significantly higher than the fall enrollment. So nursing program has actually maxed out right now for our current blocks. We have a morning block and an afternoon block and we are maxed out, we are full and we have a waiting list for that. Um, I think that's really exciting and so now I will, in spirit of transparency, I will tell you the waiting list is only four students. It's not very long, but it is a waiting list. And so we've talked with those four students and we will give them first dibs on the fall enrollment. So they will get into their juniors. So they'll certainly have time to take that program. However, um, you know, when we start having waiting lists, then what we will do is we'll look at, look at adding capacity. Do we add in a middle of the day block, a morning block, a middle? You know, you instantly add capacity by doing that. Um, some schools, I've said this multiple times, other districts in, in outside of Iowa have even done, you know, four blocks where they have an early morning, a mid, um, a, you know, mid afternoon, and then they'll even do like a four to six block. So we have opportunities to add capacity there. And even the, the digital graphics is not full yet, but I just got word yesterday that there were, I believe there were 10 more students who wanted to join. So we're getting, we're getting some kids in that. Then the counterbalance of that is working on enrollment for the fall. So we are doing some really cool things to make sure that people are very, very aware of the programming and um, that they start thinking about whether the CTE would be right for them. So one of those things um, is that we are giving tours to all ninth grade kids in our district. And we're doing it in small groups and I'm actually leading some of them, which I 
asked to do because I thought it would be really great to work, you know, face to face with some of our ninth graders. So they will be traveling in small groups. Actually, I believe they started today. Um, I'm doing the tour tomorrow morning at 7:45, so it'll be fun to to meet the students and show them around and tell them, you know, tell them about it. Let them visualize. Let them talk to some of the students who are already there. Um, so we believe that that will bolster our enrollment because it's a good thing. You you were a guidance counselor, so you know that that's how you that's how you get people to be there. So that's exciting. And then Tara and her department are working on um, a really great promotional video that we will, that'll probably go district wide and who knows, maybe broader than our district, we don't know. But the promotional video will be telling a little bit more about the programs, but it actually is gonna focus on people recommending a particular student. Like I'm gonna tag so-and-so because I think they would be really interested in this particular program. So the, ta the, the hashtag will be explore your future and so they will, will be asking you to, to forward that, that post through social media, through Facebook, through Twitter, through printing it out and handing it to somebody, <laughs> whatever you want to do to get that message out. But um, we're really excited about that going and the, the, really the focus of that video will be to bolster enrollment for the fall because we actually have done pretty well for the spring. So growing every single semester, that's, that's very, very exciting. So. Um, and so that's all I wanted to mention on CTE. And then my final thing is, um, I have been wanting for quite some time to really do uh, some updates on the, the strategic plan. And so if people, I don't know if the camera can shoot up here, but we've added a new sign. We've updated it with our strategic plan that has P-A-C-E. Good job, Pam. Um, and, and that is really the areas that's people, achievement, community, and environment. And so what I'm going to pass out to the board today um, is just kind of a quick reference guide I guess I would call it I think I can go that way I think there's plenty I'll just pause a moment till you get that and I kind of want to just update you a little bit about how we're gonna tackle this <clears throat> so I think it would be really great if we would take one area a month for a while and once we finish the PACE we might start over and look at those so um, in January, one of the meetings, and I haven't quite decided yet whether it'll be the first meeting or the second meeting, and it may depend on the agenda items and which one maybe is shorter because it'll take a little bit longer. But we will be highlighting the P area, the people area, and you can see there are four goal areas underneath there, attracting and retaining high quality staff, diverse staff, um, aligning our staff with um, talent and workforce needs, kind of getting the right people in the right seats, um, and then professional learning opportunities, and then that last one is really improving the organizational health. And we have done, in each of those goal areas, we have really strategic actions that we are taking, and we're measuring to see the progress on those. So starting in January at one of the meetings, I would be, we will be um, bringing some people before you, before kind of toward the beginning of the meeting through a report and talking about maybe highlighting a couple of the areas where we are working and then having some people here. Um, Bev is really probably on, on the P for people being the, um, being in human resources, she really has the lead on many of the things under P, but she'll be bringing some people with her. Maybe, you know, one of them is that we talk about onboarding um, under that very first one. Um, the second bullet under attracting and retaining staff, one of the things that we've worked really hard on is developing a comprehensive onboarding process, and that's really when people are hired, letting them know how do we do business in Waterloo schools. So one of the things that Bev and I have talked about is maybe bringing, um, we've had a couple new principals who have been hired to our district from outside, and so we've worked really hard to help them understand what it's like and how to do your job. And so we asked them along the way, um, one of them is Rachel Savage at Bunger, and we've asked her along the way to give us feedback. How what did you not know what did we forget to tell you and so we've been using that to amp ramp up or amp up our, our process and so Bev will be kind of taking she may not be doing all the talking I, I suspect not but maybe talking a little bit about some of the things that we're doing highlighting a couple things bringing in a few people to say here's how it feels you know here's what the plan was and here's how it feels as the plan is being enacted and then in February Charles is going to go through some of the things that we're doing in the area of student achievement and then in um, March, we're going to tackle C with some of the things we're doing for community. And then in April, we're going to work on E. And then we'll see how that goes. We may start right over with P again, and who knows. Um, but I think it would be really helpful for people to know the work that we do. It's not just kind of willy-nilly where we come and say, OK, what's the job of the day? We don't do that. We have a plan. We're working the plan. It's a five-year plan. And so I just wanted you to have this cheat sheet 
kind of a quick, re quick reference guide and gear up for January. We'll be sharing a little bit more with the public and it'll be fun for them to be able to watch it on TV. So thank you. Oh, and one more thing on that. I will be asking the board prior to the presentation to give me feedback on what questions are rolling through your mind. So for January, sometime in December, I will be saying to you, give me some questions, look at what we're doing and write some actual questions. And we're gonna make sure that we answer those and more during our presentation. It just kind of will give Bev and others some good guidance. And so we'll do the same thing for Charles and his group in February. And it, it'll get a few new faces and it'll fill our crowd a little bit more so besides Tara and Charlotte so so where where we have the performance metrics will they be part yeah of this? We, we have attached the performance metrics to each of these and so as we're highlighting we, we're just not going to have time at a board meeting to dig into every single thing we're doing under P but Bev will be just picking a couple highlights and then she'll also be referencing some of the highlights of the metrics that we are using to track how we're doing along the way and maybe give some statistics like you know we used to have this many and this is where we are now so i think it'd be really good for the board um mm -hmm. but also it'll be really good for the public okay. so if they choose to watch it on tv which i'm sure many do thank you right yep. optimistic yep. choosing positive so thank you thanks dr lindeman and i just want to echo that one of the reasons that i think having a strategic plan is so important is that it isn't just a document that sits on a shelf and that you pull it out when you i mean it should be a working document and so um when dr lindeman and i meet because we do that at least once a month we talk about different ways to keep um, our board informed our public informed and i think that this strategic plan really keeps us focused and gives um, the board a direction as well as the superintendent a direction from the board and so it's all really important stuff and so I, I certainly look forward to the updates but I also think it is really important that we do some of that work here at the board table so I'm looking forward to that and I'm sure we'll all get our little pencils out and get our questions ready for you so uh, Bev I guess you're first so <laughs> all right thank you um, the next item on our agenda then is information from board members and I'm going to start down here to my left with Jesse. Okay, I guess the only thing I had tonight was just uh, thought I'd just uh, recognize uh, Carlton Todd and Devin Moore for being first team all state for football. Okay. Quite the honor and uh, good job for those kids and the rest of the kids on the team. So, Thank you. That's a great honor for both those young men. Angie. Excuse me. <laughs> I, have, I have a sports related one as well. I, I got to attend the Jamboree, um, the women, the girls Jamboree at East, um, and it was really refreshing as an East High basketball cheerleader from the 90s watching my sister never win a game to watch them win and play. I was wrestling cheerleader in college. <laughs> watch them win and play and compete at a level that was amazing for so waterloo east high girls are if you haven't have a chance to go to a game the next game is coming up on Thank december 9th you. it's um against east versus west and west is also looking really good from what i hear i got to the tail end of that one um so that was it's going to be just an amazing game and i'm mm -hmm. looking so forward to it hoping that that can fit in my calendar awesome thank you Rhonda. I just wanted to add in terms of our strategic plan the community has an opportunity to uh, give input coming to board meetings is important you know we listen to what your concerns are what your recommendations are and we do take those things into account so as a community and as parents you do have an opportunity to have a say in our strategic plan uh, also I wanted to say uh, a lot of times parents and the community don't think they have enough to donate or they can't afford to help uh, schools but something as simple as uh, collecting a pop tap off of a can for example at Pointer Elementary they collect those things for the Ronald McDonald House and what the Ronald McDonald House is is for our young people who are, are ailing and their parents need somewhere to stay you know they take those pop taps and they collect money from them so something as, uh, so so small seemingly can make such a big difference so really take an opportunity to look at your kids school look at what fundraising opportunities they have because you would be pleasantly surprised at how much you can help and uh, that's all i have thanks rhonda mike i uh, just wanted to comment that uh, most of us enjoyed uh, attending the uh, Iowa School Board Convention 
a couple of weeks ago, and I think um, all who attended got a lot out of it, and uh, look forward to uh, debriefing maybe a little and get, getting some information from each other as to what we got. It might be a good idea to have a work session just to discuss some of those issues. You have to share what you shared with me about what you heard there and how it compares to Waterloo. Well, I found myself um, in some of the discussions <coughs> that I would heard the speakers and, and just people in, in small discussions uh, making comments about what they were doing and what was working and I found myself saying, yeah, we do that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, oh yeah, good. I've heard of that one. And, and it was refreshing and uh, made me feel good that uh, we're doing, we know we're, we, we can tell that we're doing the right things and um, we just have to let time and, and uh, the efforts give them a chance and hopefully they will uh, succeed. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I don't Bye. have anything other than thanks for the early Christmas present. <laughs> uh, I, wrote on I know, I'm looking out. I said, he, what, you missed the last meeting yeah. when we had this, uh, we were all doodling yeah. around on it during the meeting. So I think you can thank Marty Metcalf, I think. Yeah. Is it his creation? or? It's my creation. It's his copy. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Pam. Well. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you to you both on that. Which, okay, so we're, <laughs> we're sharing the love on that. Exactly, exactly. And I, and I have no report. I was going to say something about the, um, about the conference, and Mike, you said it very well, so no need to repeat myself on that. Um, I do just want to remind our public that we only have one regularly scheduled board meeting in um, December, and it will be on the 12th of December. We do have a few other meetings scheduled in there, but this is our regular one. Um, and then we'll be back here again in January for our regular two meetings, second and fourth. Um, is there anything further that the board would wish us to address tonight? Just for me, for parents, I just want to encourage you to really connect with your building principals or your, your son or daughter's principal to see what ways you can get involved. We know that parental involvement is, is a major indicator of student success. Uh, and a lot, of, a lot of us, especially those of us who are single parents, I know that's difficult, but there are a lot of ways that, that you can contribute. So please just ask to see what you can do because um, we, we really need um, just involvement from everyone. It does take a village. So just ask and see what's needed and, and what you can do. And if your boss won't let you off to work, let, let us know. <laughs> let me know. <laughs> they can come to a meeting and we can talk about it. So <laughs> great. Seeing uh, nothing further than I would ask uh, for a motion to adjourn. And a second. And all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, same sign. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Good night. Thanks. Okay. Yay. There was something.